All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to be working with shiny rust. I had this uh, casting for a while. You see this one. Uh, if you follow the channel, you know that recently I restored this custom El Dorado from 1968 and this custom Cougar. So I had some paint left on the airbrush and I painted whatever was left with the root beer color. There it goes. And then when I was doing the other one, I had a little bit left of that ice blue, so I just threw it on top. The moral of the story is you can create rust with any shade of brown. It doesn't really matter. For this other one, I'm going to be using this kit from Vallejo. I'll try to find it online and leave you a link down below as it's really complete for this job. And right here, this one is the most important, chipping medium. Uh, this is another color that it comes with. It's kind of a weird green. Chipping medium, remember that one. Very important. That's the most important thing in here. Dry rust. Rotten white. Rust. Dry blood. Fresh blood. Vomit. You gotta remember all these paints, if you're gonna use them, you gotta shake them. This is my airbrush. I have a video on that airbrush. It's customized. But you really don't need an airbrush for this. So I'm going to use this uh, oxidized rust first, straight to the airbrush. My airbrush has a 0.5 needle. I'm shooting at uh, 20 PSI right now. This does not have to be pretty. Just keep that in mind. Relax. You're creating rust. Rust is not perfect. Just make sure you cover everything. So this step right here, you could easily do with a uh, with a brush. Notice that I'm not using primer. Again, it's rust, so relax. I'm just making sure that I have enough paint. Now I'm going to use this other rust, which is a lighter color. I did not shake it like I'm supposed to. And you're supposed to add uh, airflow improver first, but it's supposed to be relaxed. So I just add it now a little bit or a lot, whatever you want. It's really up to you. And then I'm going to use uh, this brush right here just to stir it around. I'm going to shoot it at around uh, 30 PSI and kind of far away because I'm, I'm looking for a spatter. A spatter effect. I could also do this with a brush. I could flicker the brush with the paint. So notice that I'm not trying to cover that whole thing. I'm just, I want to get a spatter of that paint. You see it's splattering all over the place. But this is rust. Rust is not perfect. So I like to do the dark color first. And then this other rust is it's uh, a bit more vibrant so here is the other one this one does have a, a coat of mint wax clear gloss and this is the trick chip and medium you could also you uh, apply this with the airbrush I've done that in the past not really necessary just go to town apply uh, the amount that you want I'm doing a lot because you will see why. 
This works great if you're only doing one coat of paint. The moment you go two coats or three colors, then it, be it becomes uh, a lot more difficult to remove the paint. That's why I'm doing a lot. So just apply it all over the place. I then use my wife's hair dryer to get it dry. Here is the other one. I had it in the oven. Put it in there for like 15 minutes. The paint is still a bit tacky. It, I mean, it was covered with uh, like two coats of uh, mint wax clear gloss. But this is not supposed to be a perfect paint job, so. The purpose of the clear gloss is to protect that first coat of uh, rust. You do not want to remove that. The chipping medium is so you can remove whatever paint you're going to put on top now. All right, so same pro uh, process. I spit up this old uh, part of the video. Again, I'm using an airbrush, but you really don't have to do this with an airbrush. You could do this by hand. I'm using that color, which is uh, Vallejo Game Air, which is a paint that it you could just shoot it with an airbrush. You don't have to thin it down. I like this color because it, it looks old. Now I'm using the white. And this is what I was talking about. See how I have blue now and then white and i'm doing white because later on i want to do red and the red only looks red if you go over white and notice how i'm doing it with a brush dollar store brush doesn't have to be expensive either just get white paint whatever i'm going to do red i gotta do white first I've done this in the past with the airbrush, but with the airbrush, it's uh, a little bit more difficult to stay, like say you only want to paint the door. With this method, I just want red in the door, which is a lot easier just to do with the, with the little brush. Now here I'm gonna do the whole quarter panel here, or the bed if you wanna call it, call it the bed. So basically this it just it doesn't have to make sense. It just gotta trust the process and at the end it's just gonna look cool. Now see I have the red that I have is transparent. It will never look red if I do that red over the blue. The Vallejo they do have other types of red but that's the one I have. So remember, the, the, the purpose of this is that you could create rust with any shade of brown. It doesn't matter the, the brand of the paint. I've done it with uh, Vallejo Candy Paint. As you can see, this one or the other one, I don't know. At this point, I don't remember which one is the one that had uh, the Spectre Flame root beer. It's just a shade of brown. And rust comes in different shades of brown, so it's whatever you got. So I'm doing red. Then I'm going to use the the other sand color you're gonna see why cars that are red and they've been out on the sun for a while and the paint tries uh, it's starting to go out the red gets kind of pink it gets kind of pinkish so because the paint is still a little bit wet you're going to see that it's going to start to mix and it's slowly going to start turning kind of a pink. See?
Again, you could use whatever colors you want. I'm just using the colors that I have. Notice how I'm doing it on the high areas where you're supposed to get a lot more damage. Now I'm using this other color here for the tailgate. From Fender. I like these old cars because the fenders usually go all the, way, all the way to the top and you have that break between the fender and the hood. The same thing goes for the Torino. I've done two Torinos in the past. Actually, I've done four. I don't have two of them anymore. I'm more on that later. So I'm going to do the roof on this one with that, I think it's called Verdine, it's kind of a shade of green. Just putting all over the place. This whole process took me like an hour or two. I was not in a rush, so it does take a lot more time if you do it with the airbrush because you, you constantly have to get up and wash the airbrush with the different colors. This is why I think it's a lot easier with the brush. Could have done all of this without even using the airbrush. Getting that front part of the grill, which in the real car is a separate piece. It's not part of the hood. And I was gonna do gold on that one, but I changed my mind. So I would normally do this under the sink. Not put the car under the water, but you know, it's uh, just a lot more easy to do it over there. Notice how the now the paint is coming out. It's a, it's going to be a lot easier to do where it just has that first coat of paint where it has the other two uh colors where it has like three three different colors. It's going to be a lot more difficult. So I'm using this a brass brush adapter from my uh, Dremel which is uh, a bit more rough than the regular brush again this does not have to be perfect uh, when you do, I'm doing the red you can still see some of the white so what I do is because I'm recording I, I'll do whatever I you know whatever I can over here in front of the camera and then I'll go over to the sink and I'll be gentle and I'll try to hide the white. So if it if there's a big chunk coming out, I'll try to remove it just so you won't be able to see the, the white part. And if you can still see some of the white, it really doesn't matter. We're doing a rusty paint job here. It just doesn't have to be perfect. Notice how I'm just using the brush with water and the paint is coming right off. You could do as much or as little as you want. Now inside the bed, um, almost remove all, all the paint. It's gonna be basically all rust in there. Remember, trust the process.
See, the paint wasn't coming out with the brush, so I used the breast brush. You don't have to be really rough with it, just light scratches. So here, this is how they look after they've been drying for a while and then I hit them with the Ming wax, clear gloss. They've been dry, I wait like 30, 40 minutes and then they get the, the water slide treatment. This is how they end up looking. Now that one on the left is gonna go down to, uh, it's gonna go down to Puerto Rico and it's gonna become a racer. That's where my other two Torinos went. And they're gonna go for this, to race. I'm gonna leave a link to Somos Hot Wheels Puerto Rico channel. So you can see this video. This guy, uh, Tato Hernandez, he's the one that's in charge of that channel. And that ranchero is probably most likely going to get a, a set of customized wheels like those. So I could go faster. They have categories on how they race and all that stuff. So here is some of the other cars that I've done in the same style of shiny rust. You can see all of them are different. No two will be alike. This is what I like about this method. And all these uh, water slides were created by a guy on Instagram. I'll leave a link to his Instagram down below. He also sells on eBay. And then I get the water slide for free. I pay for them, so it's not sponsored. And that's going to be it. Thank you for watching. hope you enjoyed this kind of a tutorial. I've been asked by many people on how to do this, so here you go. Thank you for watching. Remember to subscribe and hit on that little bell so you can get notified of any upcoming videos. And make sure you become a member. If you become a channel member, uh, you get special perks. Thank you for watching. Peace out.